Hi, welcome back to the workshop. If you remember in last week's video, I reviewed these Rutland's T-Track flip stops. If you haven't seen that vid, I'll pop a link up and down below. Have a quick gander at that before you watch this one. It'll set the foundation for this video. So in that video, I was particularly underwhelmed by certain features of these flip stops to the point where I'm almost definitely not going to use them. So I went back to the PC and started Googling in a frenzy for flip stops and T-tracks to see if I could find something better. And there are, as I'm sure you well know, loads out there that are much better, including the ones Dennis reviewed on Hooked on Wood, which I didn't want to buy because of the potential time delay in getting them. But then I started thinking, surely I can make something myself with all the equipment that I've got and all the hardware that I've got hanging around the place. Why can I not make one? And why can I not make one using the bit of kit that I've not told you about yet that I've owned for maybe a couple of months, which is a 3D printer. Now, this is not going to be a video about this is how I 3D printed and this is how I drew it in this wonderful piece of software this is a video about a flip stop so this is what i've come up with it took a number of iterations to get it right three to be exact to get the hinge mechanism itself a to fit together and b to fit together in the right place and then voila I've got a flip stop. It'll keep itself in place purely by tension, which is being brought to bear by this bolt with a nylock nut at the end. The other nut on there is not required. My apologies. It shouldn't be there. Lack of preparation. PPP. So there's the top bracket and there's the flip and it flips back out of the way into its own space and if you remember that was one of my primary requirements for the flip stop so I've achieved that that's great it'll stay out of the way as I just mentioned with a friction implied by that nylock nut and bolt so all I need now is a channel for it to run in and it just so happens that again I believe last year I bought the very thing for it the match fit micro jig dovetail clamp system the match fit micro jig dovetail clamp system and here's one of the little accessories that come with it and this slides in the dovetail channel that you cut so why can't i utilize that in this situation so And here it is fitted, my homemade 3D printed flip stop. And as you can see, the friction from the knurled nut keeps it in place. It folds up nicely out of the way back into its own space. And let's see if it moves freely. Well, I'd call that a success. However, there is one um, flaw that I've introduced that I never gave any thought to whatsoever which is this knurled nut at the back that locks it into the uh, router channel that I've just cut 
so if I push the stop nice and tight against the fence where we'd like to have it then everything's superb but if I don't want to move the stop and I literally want to flip it up out the way then that knurled nut fouls the back of the flip arm and I, I as I said I didn't take that into account when I positioned this router channel so if I move the router channel back by that much about six mil then I'll alleviate that problem so I'll get a new piece of ply and as I said move that channel back but the other functional aspects of the flip arm are superb with the added bonus that this particular flip arm will fit underneath the body of the saw just but it will fit well there it is my literally homegrown homemade flip stop solution i've rerouted the channel the dovetail channel in the ply three mil i had to move it back to enable the flip stop to fold back into its own space so i don't have to move it so there are my requirements met and that leads me on quite nicely into an upcoming video that i'm planning is there really a place in a modern woodworker's workshop for a 3d printer something that deals with plastic well i think there is if you can make your own useful products with it how difficult are they to learn to use how awkward is it to learn to use this software that you've got to get your head around how much do they cost where do you get them from and how do you make it do something useful in the first place so if you'd like to see that video and other videos that i make then please hit the subscribe button and click on the bell icon thanks for watching and see you next time ta -ra.